Hi, welcome to the Turtle Burger Crochet Podcast. My name is Brittany. This is episode nine, um, March 6th, 2022. I hope y'all are doing good. This was kind of a slow craft week <laughs> for me, so most of what I'm gonna show you will be from the week before. It's already way later than I wanted it to be, so I'm gonna just try to get past this without any editing and go on. <laughs> My only finished object this past couple of weeks, um, if you watched last episode, I really got into dishcloths and I still am. Um, and I was really not liking the pointedness of when you finish a diagonal um, dishcloth or washcloth. So I reached out to a few people um, on the Carla Knits podcast Ravelry thread and we had a huge discussion about it. It was really great fun. And um, Carla mentioned that she had seen Amy of Noble Crafts Character was kind of having the same issue and was just doing a bunch of different dishcloths. And she found the, it's called the Classic Diagonal Dishcloth. Um, I don't remember who it's by, which reminds me, I'm just going to try to film this and get it uploaded. I will, after it's uploaded, I will go back and add show notes and then also put the show notes on my website, but everything will eventually be linked down below. And of course it's all on my Ravelry pages, but anyway, so here is the classic diagonal. So as you see, I have not woven in my ends. You start down here and work your way up. And this is how it finishes at this point right here. Now it's still a little pointy, but definitely not like the others. And I'm very pleased with this. Um, so this will most likely be my new, um, oops, sorry, my new go-to dishcloth pattern. And I just used, um, and this turned out way bigger. So in the, pa in the pattern, I think she has you increase to 60 stitches. And Amy on Noble Character Crafts had mentioned that that seemed, the first one she made where she did that seemed really big. So she only increased to 52. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna decrease even less because this yarn I used is peaches and cream, which if you watched last podcast know, really hurts my hands. So I increased my needle size up to a four and a half, which did much better with the peaches and cream. But of course it was gonna make the dishcloth like super de duper huge. So I increased to, I believe, 48, either 45 or 48. Um, I have that in my, we'll have that in my show notes for modifications, but here it is. And this is again, peaches and cream in the color sea breeze. I am trying to use up this cone. So you're going to be seeing a lot of that here lately <laughs> for dishcloths. Anyway, so that is my only finished object. I'm very pleased with it. I'll be making a bunch more. Um, hopefully I can kind of get my crochet and knit mojo back. The, this, this week was just kind of like, nah, I didn't really want to do anything, but it was an, a nice needed break. So there's that. So there's the first, um, dishcloth. My, let's continue on with dishcloths. My next, or my first work in progress. So that was my only finished object. My first work in progress, going back to this cone, um, while I was waiting for March's dishcloth of the month to be released, um, for the email to be sent out, I thought, oh, I'll go back and do this one. So this is Double Dutch by the Kitchen Sink Shop. This was the March 2021 um, dishcloth of the month. And I, again, peaches and cream. Um, now this needle size, um, these are my Chiago Bamboo needles um I believe is a three point yeah just a 3.75 millimeter and it does okay I don't I don't particularly mind that so this was through the first repeat and it is really really neat and again it is in 
peaches and cream um, sea breeze. So I really like that. And right now, everything, I don't feel like digging bags out. So I'm storing everything in a bunch of these huge Ziploc bags. <laughs> Whatever I can find to put a project in, that's where it went this week. Um, so let me get the other dish cloth. Okay, so once um, the March's, March of this year dishcloth was released from Kitchen Sink Shop, I started it. And here it is. It is called Emily's Garden Dishcloth. And it is so pretty. I'm not familiar with the book um, this month. It's something by Lucy Maud Montgomery, I think. And apparently there's someone named Emily in it. And maybe she has a garden. I don't know. But this is so, so cute. And this yarn, well, my this needle is my Conant Bamboo set. And it's a 3.25 millimeter. And I am using the Mainstays in the color from Walmart in the color uh, Opaline Green. Opaline Green, something like that. So I am really, really liking that. And moving on to my next work in progress. Um, so you all know, you've heard me talk about her a few times. So much for not editing, but anyway, I'm just gonna put all the clips together. <laughs> so there really won't be any editing. But anyway, what I was saying was, um, if you've watched me before, which thank you if you keep coming back, and if you're new, hi, welcome. Um, I enjoy watching Murder Knits, um, who obviously knits and also talks true crime sometimes. Anyway, she, um, a few weeks ago, she posted in her community tab, which I will link to because there's not a written pattern for it. She um, makes this shawl all the time, and I always thought it was very pretty, but anyway, apparently other people have commented on it. And so she posted what she does, and I don't know what she calls it. I call it the murder knit shawl. Anyway, so I thought I would do that. You, it's any, hold on. My plan of just storing anything I can is not working out because it's in this jar, but now I can't get it out. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, um, anyway, so I thought I would make it. It's any yarn weight, any um, uh, needle size, you know, whatever you want. So. I am trying to use up stash this year and I have a bunch of DK or I presume it is DK weight. It was given to me by my mother-in-law and I am fairly certain I had given it to her at one time and now she's given me the scraps back. But anyway, so it is this yarn, which is so beautiful. It is kind of a rosy pinkish color and it almost feels kind of like a t-shirt yarn. I don't know if you can it's not going to zoom in. Anyway, it is absolutely beautiful. Very soft. Like I said, I don't know what it is. It feels kind of like a t-shirt yarn. Anyway, so I got out a four millimeter. Right now I'm using DPNs and as it grows, it will go. All you do is increase until whatever size you want. There's no decreasing or anything. Um, so I guess that would kind of be like maybe a boomerang, boomerang shawl. I don't know. Anyway, um, so here is my little bitty start of it. And it is, it moves pretty quick. I just didn't, haven't done much time. And I thought I would kind of reserve this for when I watch her podcast and episodes. And I have my little bubblegum tape stitch marker from um, Mindful Makes on there. So that's one work in progress. Let me stick it back in the jar here. Like I said, I didn't feel like trying to dig out project bags and it's small enough that I can just pop it in there. Um, let's see. Okay. And I did do a little bit of my husband turning his socks. Uh, so they're on a Chiago Twisty Shorty. Is that what it's called? 
twist shorties, nine inch circular. Um, and the yarn I'm using is Huntington Valley Yarns, which is a 75 Superwash Merino 25 nylon in the color blue. And this is where I was two weeks ago on the last podcast. So I was able to get all this done. It's a toe up. I am using the rye sock kind of as a base, but it's just a vanilla sock. So that is moving right along. I'm trying to have it done for his birthday, um, but it would be really cool if I could have them done by April for our anniversary. So that's moving along. Um, and then last Sunday, I decided I wanted to start a scrap project. I didn't know what to do, so I just went to a blanket. I'm not really following a pattern exactly, but Amy Kate of The Graceful Tangle did a video just kind of on the um, corner to corner technique. And I've done that one other time and really liked it. So that's what I'm doing with all my worsted weight. Now, it occurred to me today, I was working on my grain straw, which I'll show you, that um, I was just going to add in all my scraps. But I think what I'm going to do is the scraps from this year i'm going to separate that and do something else with it because then it would be kind of like a everything i i knit and crochet within that year and i think that would be really fun but in the meantime this is the scrap blanket i started last week so last week i got through so here it is it is the most unplanned scrap blanket probably ever because I just wanted to crochet. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to plan anything. I just wanted to use these scraps and get them out of here. So that's what I did. So I cast, or not cast on because it's crochet, but anyway. So last Sunday, I got all the way through to this color. This morning, I did the green. And to be honest, the only reason I stopped is because I couldn't decide. I had more green than what I thought I had. And I got kind of tired of looking at it. This is leftover um, Big Twist Value from Joann's in the color Emerald Green. And like I said, it's probably the world's ugliest scrap blanket. But I'm not giving it to anyone, so there was no plan needed for it. I just want to use up these scraps and get them out and kind of de-stash this year. Um, the next colors I have... Um, are these two so those will be next I kind of did a magic ball um, last week for the first well I had a magic ball from the start down here all the way up to this color um, but it leaves that knot and I can't always guarantee it's on the wrong side and so I think I'm probably just gonna do you know regular color changes now also the hook I'm using, I got this hook, I've never used it before, several years ago I was in Walmart and I noticed that a lot of the crochet hook sizes had changed and I found this one which is, it's a boy ergonomic hook and it's a J but it's a 5.75 like what, let me see, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll be honest, I don't particularly care for it because this part right here is so like thick. It, Whenever I pull a, my stitch through to finish it, it catches on the row below. So that's a little irritating, but I'm getting used to it. And it's so amazing when you go from crochet to knitting, it uses like completely different muscles in the hands and the arms. I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't crochet as much as I used to because it kind of hurts. Okay, now this next project I saved for last because I moved it to my only acquisitions this week. So I'll show the bag after, um, after I show this. So this is my grain shawl. And it is coming real uh, right along. I really am probably nearly done, which I am so ready for it to be done because I want to move on to other things. So this is what it looks like. Move it back here. This is where I was last week. And then this is where I've gotten to um, 
since today. So it is moving right along. It's the green shawl. I am putting this in the, um, well, it's going in two um, cows. The first one it's going into is the uh, We Share Needles podcast and the Shaw La La along. And then I can double dip into um, the Carla Knits podcast. She is having a year long um, Love Your Stash make along. So it will go in that as well. And so with the Carla Knits make along, she is randomly selecting prizes throughout the year. Um, and for the second time in a row, I won another one from her or was selected with a random picker. And she sent me a bag that she sewed, which is just Hold on, my yarn's pulling, so let me take it out. Just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. And she did sew this herself. She has a very thick, like, rope or something. I don't know what it is, as her drawstring. And she has this very pretty kind of sparkly inside. She does use batting in all of her bags. So... Um, it is very thick. It's very durable. And I love it. I am so glad I want it. But if I had not won it, <laughs> she, um, around the same time, started an Etsy shop to sell her bags in. And I was so excited that she, in my bag, she even included a little label, which here is her label. She is CB Crafty Girl. That's what she's known as all over the internet, but also on Etsy, which I will link because I highly recommend her. First of all, she's just a very, very sweet person. You should definitely check out her podcast and her projects. They're fabulous. Um, but her Etsy shop, she has so many beautiful bags now and she is adding more all the time and I love it and I'm so thankful for it and I don't think she watches my podcast, but if you do, hi, Carla. Thank you. I love this bag so much. So it is now the home for my grain shawl. Um, let's see. Okay. My last thing, that's all my works in progress. My last thing is the goldfish cardigan by Tin Can Knits that I mentioned last time I'm going to make for a little lady. I did not start it. I attempted to swatch for it. And here is where I need y'all's help. So I've never really done a color work before. And again, it's in a plastic bag. This is not all my yarn for it. This is just what was already in a ball and I can add more later. So the main color is this, which is Bernat Baby Sport in the color lavender. So it's a DK weight. Whoops, I just dropped the yarn ball. So if you won't go, you guys won't see it again. And then for the goldfish, the I am using Karen Simply Soft in the color strawberry, which is technically a size four worsted weight, but I feel like it's a very light worsted weight. And so I wanted to use that for the goldfish because I didn't, I'm nervous about the color work. Um, kind of sinking in the background like the test knit hat that I did for designs by Vanessa and um, so I thought maybe having the bigger yarn it wouldn't shrink back I don't know we'll see how that goes but what I'm curious about is with the swatching I I feel like I should swatch the color work and I have tried looking for this, but I haven't really found quite what I'm looking for. How do you do that? I mean, I have the pattern, so I have the chart of the goldfish. Um, so do I just do like a bunch of rows of regular stockinette and then do some in the chart in that needle size and, and measure them both separately? Is that how I do it? I don't know. So that's to be seen because I don't know. <laughs> so maybe you, if you know, you can tell me, is that how you 
do a color work gauge like you just do stockinette or whatever the regular stitch is which in this case is stockinette and then do a piece of the chart for the color work portion I don't know anyway so that is all I have this week um, um, I mentioned last time that I was gonna do a little more reading and get a little more into um, true crime which I enjoy the only thing true car true crime related I is I watched a little um, and I don't even remember who it was from um, a little thing I don't know what you, video it was a YouTube video on a missing girl in California Carly Goose I think G-U-S-E which is just a really sad story you should definitely look that up because that just doesn't none of it makes sense to me and there have been no updates because they don't have any I guess um the other thing I was going to do is I was going to start reading and I have enjoyed that so I went to I like to use the Hoopla H-O-O-P-L-A app um and it connects directly to our local library probably does others I've had it since like 2016 so I don't remember how all that works um and lo and behold they had an audiobook of my all-time favorite book which is the love comes softly series and there's three audiobooks on it so i don't know if that if the three go through the th first three books or they go through the whole series in three parts i'm not sure yet but anyway i'm almost done with the first audiobook and i have just really been enjoying it when i don't have time to sit down and read and but I want to kind of listen to it. I can do that. And I can, and I've been, that's what I've been listening to when I knit on my shawl. And then also, um, I've been trying to actually read. So I mentioned last time that I had over 400 books on my Kindle and I was, th that was just so overwhelming. It was ridiculous. Um, going back to about 2015, 2016. So it turns out I had 437 and I went through and deleted most of those. I don't know what I was thinking. Some of them are, um, were like, um, a sequence of books that I didn't have the whole set for. And I was like, why did I do that? Did I download the free ones? Cause most of these were free and then decide I was, if I was going to try to go find like the first one in the series. I don't know what I did. Anyway, I deleted all those and just kept the ones that I was really interested in. And so the first one um, is called Happily Ever After. And it is really good. I can't remember who. Oh, it's by Jen Falk. I'll link it below um, if I can. Like I said, I've had it for several years. So I assume it's still on Amazon. But um it is the story of two missionaries who kind of grew up together. Um, Camille was best friends with David, who's the main lead, the male lead character. She was best friends with his um, sisters. And so he's a little bit younger um, and how their stories collide. So they're both missionaries and it's so far I'm really enjoying it. So it's called Happily Ever After. So I am glad to get back into reading again. Um, the other thing was I did have a la on the last podcast, someone asked if I would consider making a red cabled turtleneck. So I am looking at different patterns for that. I don't know if I'd necessarily make a turtleneck um, just because those kind of irritate my neck, <laughs> but I am, I would like to try cables. So I have found a couple of patterns. Like I said, this podcast is kind of being hurried. So I'm not going to put the couple up that I am trying to choose between right now, but I probably will, but that did not get forgotten about. Um, so that may be in the works and I do have a design in the works that I could show you, but I want to submit it to a subscription box. So I'm not going to yet because I don't know what the the thing with that is they just asked you know if you wanted to if I wanted to send a design in so I thought why not I'll try it um it's just a simple crossbody type of foam pouch you know that would be fun for summer 
or any time really. So that is it for me. I hope you guys have a great week and I will try to get this uploaded and see you in a couple weeks. Bye.